A warm welcome to you all. My name is John and in this video I'll introduce you to what lies beyond the limited pattern matching properties InfoPath 2010 and 2007 make you aware of. In an older video I showed how to use pattern matching on a particular code. Here we'll explore pattern matching further looking at other options you can use. For those that are new to pattern matching I'll explain its principle. Then we'll see how pattern matching is used to show the limited examples that InfoPath displays. Then I'll introduce you to the meta characters and how they work. But first, what is pattern matching? Well, it allows you to assess the characters of a value stored within a field or control to ensure they meet a specific sequence. If you're familiar with similar properties like input masks in Microsoft Access, say, the point to note here is pattern matching evaluates the whole value when it is complete and not each key press. But this video is to show you that there are more pattern matching properties than the ones InfoPath display. So I have my form template open that I'm going to use for this demonstration and I have a text box at the bottom here called pattern box I'm going to use this for a validation rule or if you're using 2007 it's a data validation so I'm going to click on new on my rules box on the right hand side here I've already got open and create a validation rule to give it the name and before I put the condition in because pattern matching just applies to any condition I'm going to add a screen tip first and that will make the invalid red dotted box appear around uh, when I get it wrong. So I'm just going to put in there invalid pattern. And now I'll create the condition. Now the condition, just confirm that the field and the operator are correct. So pattern box does not match pattern. Now bear in mind data validation is pessimistic logic, so it's looking to see what makes it fail. So I'm going to use does not match pattern, and that will make the error pop up if I fail to apply. So I'm going to select a pattern and up comes the data entry pattern box as usual. I'm going to ignore the sta standard patterns. I'm going to pick the custom pattern at the bottom and leave it empty. And you've seen hopefully the drop down box of all these standard characters. I'm going to use and pick on the any letter. Now as well as picking that from the drop down box you can type it in yourself manually. So I'm going to leave that as it is, so backslash lowercase p and in braces a capital L. And that allows me to put in any letter, uppercase or lowercase. Let me demonstrate. OK, OK, and preview my form. Pattern box, letter E, lowercase, works fine. Uppercase, works fine. Put in a number or two letters, because don't forget I'll ask for just one character, any other character, and it fails. But this is the big issue. If I go in and display that condition again and modify it, what if someone had typed in those characters themselves? Well, it's perfectly fine, but you may accidentally put in an uppercase P, not knowing that this actually is a valid meta symbol. What this does is it reverses the pattern. So it's saying you can put in anything except an uppercase or lowercase letter. So let me demonstrate. There we go. So if I put in a, a lowercase e, now it's wrong. Uppercase e, it's wrong. Put in a number, perfectly fine. And if I put in a ampersand, it also works very fine. But it still bides by the fact that it's only expecting one character. So whatever I put in, it's got to be one character, providing it's not a letter. So it's a very clever little tool if you know that these additional choices are available. And another example where that would work is the digit. So I can put in there another custom pattern. And you can see there's one that says any digit. Now that would allow exactly that, any number from 0 to 9 to be placed into the box. But what if I put that in with a uppercase D rather than a lowercase D as it's placed in the drop down? Well again it reverses the logic. So if I go in and preview the form with an uppercase D now it's allowing anything except a number. 
numbers not allowed. Now I can put in letters. Now I can put them in with characters, etc., etc. So there's more to the choices there. So one more I'm going to demonstrate with that backslash, which is not in there at all, is a backslash and a W, which is in the description known as allowing any word. So this allows any alpha numeric character. Hmm. So I can put in numbers, works lovely, letters, lowercase and uppercase. But at the moment I put in something that's not alphanumeric, like an ampersand, it throws an error on the screen to me. So there's more to the pattern matching meta symbols, as we call them, than you'll see in InfoPath. Now, patterns in InfoPath recognize the same 12 traditional meta characters that you'll find in other expression packages, such as Perl and Java. Now some of these bend the rules, making otherwise normal characters that follow them quite special. We don't like to call those longer sequences characters, so when they make longer sequences, we call them meta symbols. But at the top of the level, those 12 meta characters are the key ones to recognize. So the example was the backslash. We've used that to demonstrate how it uses it to match characters in some way. So here's a list of the ones I've gone through backslash D, backslash W, and the recognized backslash P. And the backslash P is used to match a property of some sort. And the property is placed inside the braces. Here's another classic character class you can try. These two allow you to check whether white space is or is not used. So backslash lowercase s will allow the user to match a white space character in the string of values and a capital S will make sure that it's not a white space character. So they can use any letter, any number, any character except for a space. So in the next couple of videos that I'll provide, I'll be going through classes and grouping, and later talking about the quantifiers. Thanks for watching. InfoPath doesn't support all the functionality of meta characters and meta symbols but it does include quite a lot. So in the upcoming videos, I'll be talking about more meta characters and classes. And in the third video of the trilogy, I'll be discussing quantifiers and groups. Thank you for watching.